Okay, uh, Killers of the Flower Moon is the new Martin Scorsese movie that just hit theaters last Friday. Uh, we went and saw it with uh, Roy, who's probably watching this video. Thank you so much, Roy, for taking both of us. Uh, and, yeah, let, so I was very hesitantly excited going into this thing. I mean, how long were trailers out for this? Because, like, I remember seeing it for, for a, while. A, a while. Yeah, and, and like, they all looked really good. Yeah, I was, I was going to say that as well. Um, like, the trailers made it look good. Uh, it's Scorsese, you know... Uh, I'm, I, he's one of those, like, film bro directors that just, he delivers pretty much every time. Um, I, I don't know. All of his movies are good. It's, it's, it's kind of like a, like a, oh, all right, you can't argue with that. That was really good. So, yeah. Um, any other pre-thoughts before we talk about the movie? Well, this is the first one of his movies I've seen. I really liked it. Yeah. I've never seen any other ones. Yeah. So, this was Cameron's first Martin Scorsese movie. Uh, also, I think this movie takes the cake for the longest movie I've ever seen in the movie theater. It was about three and a half hours long. It was ten minutes longer than Oppenheimer. So, Oppenheimer. Oh my god, it took forever. Uh, Alright, let's, uh, let's talk about the movie. So, um, I want to first off preface this by saying we both loved the, the, the movie. Mm -hmm. I think... Uh, Martin Scorsese really did it, outdid himself again. Um, if you've been following this channel for a little bit, you, you'll know that, like, I loved The Irishman, and that was pretty high up on my 2019 list. Uh, and he just is continuing that greatness of, like, really long-ass movies that have Robert De Niro in them. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I really loved it. Cam, do you want to, do you want to start us off? Um, can I get a chair first? Who shouldn't get a chair? Why didn't you get a chair? I Cameron has a chair now. Um, do you you want to start off with your thoughts on the movie? Um, I thought the there's like three part. Like if it, you're talking about it in thirds, the first third in the beginning was so good. It was like oh, also don't spoil anything by the way. So basically, um, the first part is so beautifully done, and there was like such a level of like respect put into it. I think that like. They really did their research, yeah. and there was no ignorance or anything like that. Like, it was it was just really awesome. Yeah. And then the middle was like, okay, they're carrying on the movie. Like, okay. And then the end, it was just like, I'm so tired, my butt hurts, I've been sitting in this chair for so long, and I don't know if I think that the ending had to be that long. I feel like they could have put all that and just, like, dispersed it. Into, condensed it? Yeah, yeah, condensed, like, the back half of the movie. Okay. So, I most I mostly agree with that. I, so, for me, uh, Killers of the Flower Moon is a very, like, intimate movie. Uh, it's, it's not action-heavy, like the trailers um, kind of, you know, let, let it on to be. But, you know, that's how this normally goes with Scorsese. However... I really enjoyed how quieter it was and how, like, you had to kind of just sit with the atrocities that these men were uh, committing uh, uh, against these native people. It was, and it's just, like, horrible to watch, but you're just, you're made to sit there and watch it happen as if it's, like, real life and how, like, plainly it happened back then. And I felt like that was really powerful and how we not only saw the perspective of the white settlers who uh, came in and, and tried to, you know, take the, the wealth away from these native people, but also you got to see the perspective of the native people. You got to see how, you know, like their traditions are still surviving in a more you know rapidly growing world and how uh, they, are being systematically destroyed, basically, and how horrible that is, and how how much they uh, want to fight back, and it, it just it was very humanizing and very um, I don't know it, it felt like Cam was saying they had done their research they weren't just going into this blind and from one perspective I felt um, I want to talk a little bit about the performances as well. Cameron, can I task you right now with looking uh, who Molly, what, what the actress's name is? Um, uh, I thought I remembered it. 
So, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, for as many problems I, as I have with him as a real life human being, and for as many you know memes that are made about him, he's still a phenomenal actor, and I think this is his his best performance. Lily Gladstone, cool. So uh, he was just so convincing in this movie because what Martin Scorsese did with the script was made it seem like you were almost kind of rooting for Leonardo DiCaprio because he purposely made him seem like not a, you know, terrible person. But then you, then I feel like with the, the entire point of the third act is the consequences for these actions. And we start to look back to scenes earlier in the film that just kind of seem like hijinks, like, you know, criminal hijinks, like we're used to with Scorsese movies. And you realize that, no, these are atrocities being committed. For as lightly as they take it at face value, it is still a, a heinous act. And we, we you get the consequences of that subsequently throughout the rest of the movie. And I think that's that was a really uh, brilliant piece of screenwriting. I, I, I do think that this the script for this film is nearly flawless. There are so many intricacies, uh, like, sprinkled throughout it uh, that just elevate the performances of uh, certain, you know, characters and certain uh, actors. Robert De Niro was phenomenal in this movie. Uh, do you want to comment on any of the performances uh, before we talk about Lily Gladstone? Molly? Uh, well, I don't think I've ever watched a movie with Leonardo DiCaprio in it. Um, is that true? That can't be true. What movies does he do? Inception. He was in Romeo and Juliet. Um, um, I've heard of that movie. I'll, looked, I'll look it up. You keep talking. Where he looked very young and handsome. Yeah. Um, like you. He looked like you a lot. Okay, okay. Um, so, it was also, like, awesome. Because there's always that one point in a movie where you're like, this person is just acting. Titanic? No, I never saw that. Um, and in this movie, like, I felt completely immersed in it, and it was like... Have you seen the Rick Gatsby movie? Mm-hmm. He's in that. Have you and seen was... Shutter Island? Nope. Um. Sorry, keep going. Yeah, I never watched any of them. Either. And he was awesome, especially because I, I recognize that, like, he's a very good actor, um, but I think from my perspective, it's like, well, he's old now. But he was awesome. He did a really good job. Um, I liked. I liked when he did the like. The, the face. Yeah, his like southern scowl. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about Lily Gladstone, who, in my opinion, uh, should win an Oscar for this performance. She was like on in an, another echelon which is strange because she's also in a movie with Robert De Niro and Leonardo DiCaprio who are obviously are like these huge acting titans that like have so many nominations and like you know praise behind them and are giving like they're they're selling out like they're giving such good performances but Lily Gladstone's as Molly is just up here compared to them uh it is she just brings so much real human emotion and she's so poignant because she's so quiet. I feel like, and she was so reserved, but she was also like consistently speaking her mind. She was consistently sticking up for herself. Uh, and the way she betrayed that brokenness of losing all of her family and slowly just watching everything around her crumble. I, I, I don't, it was really, really powerful. And like, I don't know. She, she I thought she was just phenomenal. To me, it was like, she was so subtle, but so powerful. Mm-hmm. Like, every... Like, we were constantly watching her, I feel like, in the movie, to like to see her reactions, especially at the end, you know, watching, like, how, how does she feel about something? And just every movement, every little change of facial, facial expression was so on point and, like, just perfect. Mm-hmm. And it's very rare to see that, yeah, I think. Absolutely. Um, so there's two more things I want to talk about before we wrap this up. Uh, one, visually, this movie is gorgeous. I mean, it is it is one of the best-looking films to come out this year. One of Scorsese's best-looking movies. It is beautiful. Uh, the color grading is great. The shot, like, the shot compositions are really good. But specifically, the way they used the environment around them to kind of... Uh, 
uh, like almost create a TV show effect of how lived in this town and this area felt. Uh, I don't know. I really, really enjoyed the setting and especially the cinematography in this movie. Uh, and then I want to talk about the issue I had with this movie, the one kind of glaring flaw that bumps it down a notch for me. And Cam touched on this earlier. But there were parts of the ending that I felt could have been concise. Now, I understand that this is a very long and complicated story, and you want you want to tell it to its fullest extent. You want to have, you want to lay it all out there for everybody, just to get this story out there. However, I felt like, because you said this in the car, and I just want to reiterate this, is that uh, they? I feel like they got to a point where it, it was like, this movie cannot be any longer. Like, we have to wrap it up. And they just kind of threw in the part that I know you know I'm talking about. Um, and just to, like, wrap up that last little bit. And that felt a little rushed. The, the, the ending, like, shot was really good. And I felt it hit home the message. But that little part with, with a couple big stars in it for a couple of minutes... I felt like that was just a little, like, okay, that was a little Scorsese moment. It was a little, you know, nod Classic to the audience. But, like, he does that in a lot of his movies. Um, what does he do? Like, like, he'll throw in a scene that just kind of doesn't make any sense, but it's there because it's cool and funny. And, like, he puts, like, A-list celebrities in it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, like, I understood why that had to be in the movie. Okay. Go ahead. I'm tagging you in. Honestly, before... That scene that happens that kind of takes you out of Sorry. everything. Before that scene, I think they could have ended the movie because oh, when when they like oh, well don't 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 talk about specific details. No, I know. Okay. Before that, when it went to black or whatever, and it like ended for a second, I was like, "Oh, okay, like it's over." You yeah. know what I mean? And I was like. They're not going to explain the ending. Because I have a lot of frustration with movies not literally grabbing me and being like, this is what happened in the end of the movie and explaining it to me. So I came to terms. I was like, I was like, oh, for a second, I was like, oh, the movie's over. Okay, I get it. I and get then it another 20 minutes To let us happened. think about it. And I was like, what is going on? Yeah. Like, this is the opposite of what I want. Yeah. Um, and I really, I think that, because... Cameron, you ended up loving... You, I think you ended up giving it a higher score than me um, on Letterboxd. But I think... Why'd you get it? We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, but I think it would have been like a, like a 5 out of 5 if for you specifically. if it And even for me, if it wasn't for the last 20 minutes. We got a little sidetracked there. But um, like I was saying, uh, I feel like you would have given it 5 stars if it wasn't for that like last little 20 minutes. Yeah, but... As I said out to, when I walked out of the movie theater, I said, because I have a big issue with like feeling mixed emotions in terms of my personal connection and enjoyment of a movie versus like knowing that it's good and being like, this was really well made, this was awesome, like they did a good job. And this movie was like a really good balance of both of it, where I felt like. Like, it stuck with me, and I felt really interested and invested in this, and it was really good. Um, Alright, so let's get into our final ratings and final thoughts. I'm going to give uh, Killers of the Flower Moon a really strong A-. minus. And I'm going to give it... What did I give it? I think you gave it a 4.5 out of 5. I give it a 4.5 out of 5. Alright, so that's our very long and pretty extensive thoughts on Killers of the Flower Moon. This is definitely a movie that you're going to see with... You should see it with other people and, like, have a long discussion after about it. You know what I mean? I um, never really bring a snack. Oh, yeah. And have a bathroom near... This is a movie, honestly, that you could skip in theaters and just watch at home and, like, take breaks in yeah. the middle. Um, Self-care, TLC. Yeah. Because, like, that's how I watched The Irishman and, like, I ended up loving that movie. But, like, that's just because it was on Netflix and I could pause it, go to the bathroom... That's besides the point. Um, this is a great movie. Uh, I had a great time with you, Cameron. I, I love whenever you get to be on here with me. I love hearing your thoughts. You were very smart. And oh, thank I love you so you. much. Oh my god, thank you so much. I love you. Okay. Um, we got anything else to say? Uh, at the end of this month, uh, so me and Cameron have been purposely watching a lot of horror movies and a lot of like Halloween movies. 
uh, just to get in the mood for the season. And at the end of the month, we're going to be talking about a bunch of them uh, in a very unscripted, kind of laid-back style um, in order to kind of be like me and Cam, just talking to each other about uh, all the, mo- the horror movies that we watched. So uh, stay tuned for that. That's probably going to come out, uh, if not on Halloween, maybe a little after. I just, you know, logistically, I have to figure out how we're going to film that and stuff. But uh, do look for that. Um, the Five Nights at Freddy's movie comes out this weekend. Definitely yeah. going to be seeing that, reviewing that. Um, Cameron, do you want to sign us off? Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment below your favorite part of the movie and your favorite color and what movie, what, what movies you're excited for us to watch next. Bye! Good job.